All right, it looks like we have sort of leveled off as far as registrations coming in here, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Crafting Resumes and Cover Letters for Flexible Jobs. My name is Bree Reynolds and I'm the Director of Online Content at FlexJobs. Very happy to have you all here today. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm just going to go over a couple housekeeping items before we get started and then we will begin the presentation. Um, first of all, this presentation is being recorded, so uh, you can feel free to take notes if you would like, and the video will also be made available after the webinar is over. Uh, we'll be sending everyone a link in an email tomorrow, um, and so you'll receive a, a link to be able to view the recording, and you can watch it as many times as you'd like. Um, I'm sure that won't be more than a couple <laughs> for most people, but uh, yes, that will be provided. And if you do have questions as we're going through, we, um, we're going to devote probably 15, 20 minutes at the end of the presentation for a question and answer session. If you have any questions that pop up as we're going through the presentation, you can use your GoToWebinar control panel to ask those questions, and you should see the um, control panel somewhere floating on your screen. If you don't see it, look around for a little orange arrow. And if you click that arrow, the control panel will pop up and you'll be able to um, see the questions chat area and, and ask your questions there. And uh, our, my, our colleague Jen Blaze will be um, monitoring the questions throughout the webinar too. So if there's anything that she can help you with in particular, um, she'll be able to answer that. If you don't receive an answer to your question uh, during the webinar, that means that we're holding it until the question and answer session. And we're going to try to get to as many of those questions as we can. So let's go ahead and talk about the topics that we're going to be covering today. Um, first, a little bit about FlexJobs uh, for any of you who are not members, which I know we usually have a fair number of people who are newer to FlexJobs on webinars. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we'll dive right into the big topic, um, what recruiters and hiring managers want to see in your resumes and cover letters, crafting resumes for flexible jobs, writing cover letters for flexible jobs, helpful flex jobs resources, and then our Q&A, as I mentioned, towards the end. Um, I should say that most of the tips that we're going to be giving here are uh, specifically for flexible and remote types of jobs that you might be applying for. So all of these tips should be added to the tips that you've already heard for resumes and cover letters about grammar and spelling and all of those basic tips. Those still apply for sure, but we're going to be talking specifically about um, resumes and cover letters for flexible job postings. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. First, I wanted to introduce um, myself and my uh, co-presenter today, my coworker and friend Carol Cochran. She's the Director of Human Resources at FlexJobs, and she's going to be speaking in just a little bit. Um, and then, like I said, I'm Bree Reynolds. I'm the Director of Online Content. And you can see um, part of the FlexJobs team over here uh, to the left of the screen, and the, the ones in the orange box, that's Carol and I. So <laughs> in case you were wondering um, you know, what we look like, there we are. So a little bit about FlexJobs. We were founded in 2007, so we've been around, this is our eighth birthday year. Uh, we were founded by CEO Sarah Sutton Fell, and we're a job search board that specializes in listing pre-screened, telecommuting, flexible schedule, full-time and part-time, and freelance jobs. Um, so anything that is outside of that traditional nine to five office job is what we focus on. Um, we have over 60 people now who all work from home offices throughout the country, a number of whom are buried in snow in the Northeast, but <laughs> luckily they work from home so they don't have to worry about commuting. And Jen, who is on the, uh, the questions area, she's uh, one of those people. And we've, since um, 2007, we've helped over 1 million job seekers in their search for flexible jobs. So we're very pleased to be able to say that and hopefully the resources that we provide um, are helpful for everyone. And then on the site, we have over 30,000 researched and vetted companies. So we have a team of job researchers who go out and, and look for these types of jobs, screen them, make sure that they're professional level, that they're legitimate, um, and then post them to the site. And we also research the companies um, and put a lot of information about those companies on our site too. So we are a really good resource if you are just looking to see what types of flexible companies exist in your area or nationwide or even worldwide. Um, we have a nice little database on the site uh, with that information. FlexJobs is a membership site, so for anybody who's not a member, um, what that means is that unlike traditional job boards which charge the employers to post their jobs to the site, we actually um, offer the subscription service, it's a, a small fee for job seekers instead. And the reason that we do that is it's very different than most other sites you'll come across, 
is that we want to be 100% focused on job seekers. So we don't take any advertising money. Um, we don't uh, charge employers to post their positions. And that means that we can be very particular about the quality of the companies and the jobs that are posted to our site. Uh, we weed out the scams. We don't post business opportunities. We don't post commission-only jobs. Um, there's no advertising throughout the site. It's really just a clean database for people who are really dedicated to looking for um, flexible and telecommuting types of jobs. And so to do that, we um, charge a small membership fee. It's $14.95 a month or $49.95 a year. And, um, and that gives you access to all of these thousands of jobs um, that have been screened and verified. And uh, so that's how we operate. Um, but we do have a lot of free services on the site as well. So if you're not a member and you're not sure you want to sign up, we definitely invite you to check out all the free resources that we have on the site. Um, if you are a member, thank you very much <laughs> for being part of the group. Um, and we hope that the service is worthwhile. And I should also say that we do offer a 100% money back guarantee. So if you, for whatever reason, sign up and you don't find any jobs that are of interest to you or you just are unhappy with the experience, um, we will refund your um, subscription fee. All you have to do is ask, um, make that request, and we'll refund it. We really just want people to be happy with the service and feel that it provided some value to their job search. So that's a little bit about flex jobs. And then I just wanted to mention one million for work flexibility. This is sort of a sister site of ours. It was founded by our CEO uh, in 2013. And it's basically um, a voice, a way to bring all of the voices together who support work flexibility to one place to um, raise awareness about work flexibility and try to get um, work flexibility for all. So it's individuals, it's businesses, it's government agencies, and it's bringing all of those people together to say work flexibility is important to us, here's why, here are our stories of how it's helped, and um, really to just kind of spread the word that this is a really important thing that companies can do for, for workers. Um, so if you want to add your voice to that crowd, feel free to go over to workflexibility.org, and it's basically just signing up. You can leave your story if you want. You don't have to, but it's a way to show support for this type of thing. Um, and we're very proud of the work that, that One Million is doing um, so far. All right, so that's my spiel about flex jobs, but let's get into the presentation. So today we're featuring not only advice that Carol is going to be giving um, from her experience in the HR arena and being actually the hiring manager and reading thousands of resumes and cover letters, but we're also going to be featuring tips from our partner organizations. So FlexJobs members actually get discounts to all of these um, products and services that these groups provide. And we have professional resume services, resume deli, and skilled assets and summary, and they've all provided tips for this webinar. So we just wanted to give them a shout out to thank them. And, uh, and you can check out, if you're a FlexJobs member, you can go to your special partner savings area to see about the uh, discounts that they provide for job seekers. And it's all kind of job search and business and home office related discounts. So pretty good stuff there. All right. So I'm going to hand it over to Carol just to talk briefly about what recruiters and hiring managers want to see. And then we'll get into resume and cover letter specifics. So Carol, take it away. Thanks, Bree. Hello, everyone. I'm glad you could join us today. Um, so, you know, kind of as an overall thought, what, what are recruiters and hiring managers, what are people like me looking for, particularly when it comes to flexible jobs and flexible roles? Um, ideally, um, you know, of course, in a perfect world, um, experience in working with whatever type of flexibility we're talking about um, is fantastic. So if it's working remotely um, or working with a flexible schedule and um, seeing very clearly on your cover letter and resume that you have that kind of experience is, is great. Um, the other piece of that, if you haven't had the experience, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't be considered. Um, if you can show, if you can connect these dots and, and show that you have the skills um, and you know what it takes to be able to work independently, to be able to work at home, um, then you'll absolutely be considered for that position. Um, you definitely want to make sure that the recruiter knows that you know what you're applying for. <laughs> that, um, you know, so we'll get into that a little bit more when it comes to cover letters in particular, um, but that your application um, matches the position that you've turned it in for. 
Um, and ultimately, uh, one of the big things is that you're really interested in the job and the company um, and not just the flex. Believe me, here at Flex Jobs, we absolutely understand how critical that flex is um, and, and how necessary. It's not just you know, a nice to have kind of thing. It's in need uh, for many people in many different situations. We totally get that. But if you are going for that job, um, they want to know that the job itself and the company is appealing to you and that you haven't applied simply because it's a remote position. Um, so you know you definitely want to make the case for why um, why that is, why you're interested in that job or that company or both, ideally, and how it's a win-win scenario for you and the company to hire you for that specific role. Great, thank you very much, Carol. Um, so that's sort of the overview. You know, these sorts of tips are really what you can be thinking about as we go through our resume and cover letter um, tips in particular. But this is really overall what recruiters are um, looking for when when they see applications for their flexible jobs. So definitely keep those in mind. And now I'm going to cover the resume part of the. Um, uh, presentation. Um, so let's go ahead and get started there. Flip over to the next slide. So crafting resumes for flexible jobs. Um, the first thing, if you have previous flexible work experience, and that can be experience working from home, that can also be experience with flexible scheduling, with freelancing, with doing part-time work. Um, those are all different types of flexibility, but the skills that you um, need to do those different things are all very similar. So um, you can add those very particular keywords to your positions if you have previous experience. You can talk about it in the job title. So you can say freelance marketing coordinator or um, uh, in the location, Dallas remote office. So if you are working from home, um, and you live in Dallas and you want other companies to know that's where you're based, but your company, for example, FlexJobs is based in Boulder, but I live in Dallas, so that's where I got this idea. Um, you know, you can talk about where you're based and where the company that you're working for is based also. So there are different ways to kind of put those Flex-specific keywords into your resume if you have that previous experience. If you don't have previous flexible work experience, you can show the skills that are needed for flexible work in the bullet points of your resume and throughout your resume. So even if you have not actually worked from home, chances are you have somewhere along the line amassed the skills that are required for somebody who works from home. So in that case, it would be things like independent work, self-motivation, communication skills, both written and verbal, um, you know, things like that, those are really important when you're working from home. You need to be able to work independently and to kind of um, use your best judgment if you um, can't get access to your manager for a question or that sort of thing. It's really an independent way of working, even though you might still be part of a team and part of a company. Um, it is a very independent way to work. So showing those skills on your resume, um, even if you haven't had specific experience working from home, it does let employers know that you... Um, you have the ability, you know, you have those skills that would make you successful if you were working from home. And the same thing goes for something like flexible schedules. That requires a lot of time management and also communication skills. It's interesting because communication skills are really important for any type of flexible work. It's because you're working more independently or with flexible scheduling, you may be working at different times than the people that you're working with. Being able to communicate effectively in under those circumstances when somebody is not in the cubicle next door or you're working um, you know, night hours and the rest of your team works day hours or something like that, it, communicating over email and phone, you have to be very clear, you have to be succinct, you have to really be able to tell people what you need or what your question is um, in a way that they'll understand. So those skills really travel over regardless. So even if you don't have previous flexible working experience, um, you can still show the skills that are necessary for that type of experience. And then finally, providing meaningful info, not fluff or buzzwords. Um, a lot of people kind of get hung up on their reading other people's resumes, and, um, and they're kind of trying to use all of these interesting, cool words that don't really mean a whole lot. I would say definitely you can read other people's resumes for tips and formatting ideas and that sort of stuff, but you really have to speak to your own capabilities, your own skills, and be very specific, and give 
meaningful information so that the employer can understand you and what you have to offer and how that can impact their company and not just what you've done before um, or a whole lot of buzzwords that kind of sound nifty. So be on the lookout for those things on your resume. Really focus more on the quality of your content and, and showcasing what you can do for an employer. And so we'll talk a little bit about more about that sort of thing and what the content can look like um, when it comes to applying for flexible jobs. So how to add previous work, uh, flexible work to your resume. I should also mention that it doesn't, if you, if you have never worked full time in a flexible position, it doesn't mean that you have to discount any small experience that you have working um, flexibly. So if you work from home when it's snowing outside, for example, for a lot of people in the Northeast, there's been a lot of, of working from home going on. So if you have those experiences where during an emergency situation you're able to work from a home office, it might only happen a couple times a year, but you've had that experience. And so that is important. Um, and you can say something like that on your resumes, you know, that, um, you know, during emergency situations, I fully equipped home office um, and, and ability to work from home experience working from home in that regard. Or if it's flexible scheduling, let's say, you know, for the summer um, with your kids out of school, you were able to negotiate a flexible schedule where a few days a week you can shift your hours or you banked your hours and were able to work four days um, and take 40 hours in four days and take the fifth day off or anything like that, that that maybe doesn't happen all the time, but that you've had that experience, that counts as flexible work experience. So even if you weren't working full time flexibly all the time, um, I would still put those experiences on your resume and in your cover letters. So in your job descriptions, um, here's a couple examples from some of our partners. I believe these were provided by Resume Deli. Uh, program manager. So this would be a job description for a program manager. Grew year over year revenues 25 to 40 percent for three straight years. And then in parentheses in that description, worked remotely 75 percent of the time. So that's a really nice way to say, no, it wasn't full-time remote work, but I did do it on a regular basis. I'm used to it, and I was very successful doing it. I was able to grow revenues while I worked from home. Um, for the customer service rep, you can read that one. So it's talking about the general customer service responsibilities, but then it also talks about working in a home-based office equipped with a phone bank, high-speed internet connection, and CRM software. So it shows that you have the setup needed to work from home. Um, I know we talk a lot about working from home as a specific type of flexibility, and that's really because what we hear from job seekers is that most of you are looking for something that um, would allow you to work from home. But this can also be applied for any type of flexibility, of course. But just showing them that you have the tools and the skills that would make you successful as a flexible worker, even if you haven't done it in the past, that's really key um, in your resume. So these are a couple examples of how to do that. And then you can also use a summary of qualifications, which is a nice um, short section at the top of your resume. We used to use things like objective, where you would say something very vague, like, you know, hoping to get a job as a customer service representative with your organization or something like that. And that has gone out the, the window. Um, a summary of qualifications is really kind of an introduction to the rest of your resume, and it really gives the employer in an easily digestible format the key points that they ought to know about you and why you're the best person for their job. And so it's a really nice way to um, put that information right up front and also work in your flexible work experience. And so you can do that. There's a couple different uh, examples of how to do that here on the screen. So you could do two years of experience working from home up to 75% of the time. And that up to is very nice because it might have been that in your first year you didn't work much from home. You were working in the office and then maybe your second year you worked more from home. So if you can estimate sort of Overall, what was your experience? Um, that's always a good thing. Or four years experience managing a flexible schedule. If you, you know, have had work flexibility in that you kind of set your own hours, you're able to come and go as you please at your, your office, which sounds great. Um, you know, if you've had that sort of experience, but it was not a formalized policy, it was just sort of the way that your office worked, you can still use that as, as examples of your ability to operate in that kind of environment. Um, so there's just a couple examples there, and then we'll have an example of an actual summary of qualifications coming up. So some resume tips, again, from our partners. Um, quantify when possible. These are our sort of um, your general resume tips that you uh, would hear for all types of resumes, um, even flexible jobs, but it is really important. And it, this is quantifying for flexibility, too. So if you were a 40-hour a work week person and you worked 20 of those hours, um, 
with flexible scheduling or from home or whatever it might be, using those sorts of numbers really helps employers to visualize you very quickly doing whatever it was that you were doing. It really, it's quantifying really helps employers to see what you were doing. So numbers, percentages, they both add value. Utilize the space on your resume wisely. Um, so this, I think this was from Pro Professional Resume Services. They um, offered the tip to focus on the top one third of the page of your resume because that's where employers' eyes are naturally going to go right away. They're really sort of focused in that area and then they might breeze through the rest of your resume pretty quickly. So if you can get really good information on that top third, and that's where the summary of qualifications and things like that come in, that works perfectly. Um, and then help them quickly identify what you can do for them. So not just what you have um, that you've done before, but what you can do for them in particular. And then how is your branding? Ask yourself, what are you best at? What, have you, what are you known for? Is that all obvious on your resume? Is that something that an employer will see or are they going to have to hunt for it? Um, try to make it obvious. What are you known for and what can you do for that particular company? And then finally, um, you can add some personality to your resume, and we'll talk about this for cover letters as well, but even just a touch of color here and there um, on your resume, something that does not distract from it, but at least helps them, uh, helps an employer read the page quickly. So if it's in, you know, the headers that you're using or, um, you know, something like that, where it, it just kind of helps organize the page in a way that is interesting to look at without distracting them from the information. So I'm not talking about, you know, doing all pinks and purples and or underlining everything. That sort of, you know, extreme use of formatting is um, definitely not recommended. But if you can do little things here and there just to make it easy to visualize and read the page, that works really well. And then finally, um, like I said, unique, helpful formatting. Um, just having the information displayed on the page that makes it really easy to digest. Think about when you're reading an article online. Um, if you have just a couple minutes to read that article, would you rather that the points were sort of bulleted out and, um, and you know, bold and it made it easy to read, or would you rather read big paragraphs of text? What would be easier for you to get through really quickly? Because that's the thing, is that recruiters and hiring managers don't have a ton of time. They, they review your resume for, I've heard, anywhere from 15 seconds to 30 seconds to 45 seconds, um, if they're giving you a lot of time. <laughs> and Carol can probably speak a little bit more about that. But, um, you know, in the small amount of time that they will spend reading your resume, um, give them the information that they need really easy to read. So here are some examples. This first one, um, really easy. They put in their in their paragraph up here, um, freelance social media associate. So you know right away that was the type of flexibility they were working with. They were freelancing. And then this one is a different way to display the job title. Um, so they had independent contractor and telecommute over here on the right side. And again, just a really easy way for an employer who might be hiring for freelance uh, work from home people to um, be able to see what this person did and that they have previous experience. If you don't have previous experience, I thought this was a really interesting way to get the skills on your resume to show them that you are set up to work from home. So pertinent technical skills. In that technical skills where you talk about, you know, Microsoft Office and you email and like all those generic skills, throw some of the other things in there that you've used that would be really helpful in a flexible work environment. So this person listed um, tools used for effective telecommuting, which is very specific, I like that. Uh, Join Me, which is um, an online sort of screen share web conferencing service. Um, video conferencing, meeting rooms, Skype, FaceTime, shared drives, shared sites. If you've ever used something like Google Drive or Google Docs to share documents with people, if you've used Dropbox, Dropbox excuse me, to, um, to share files or pictures with people, anything like that. Um, whether or not you were using it while you were working from home, those are the types of tools that people with flexible jobs often use in order to um, keep their teams cohesive no matter where or when people are working. So feel free to put those on your resume. I thought that was a really smart way to do it. And then here's an example of the summary of qualifications and how the flexibility that this person has is, is worked into there, the stuff that they've done before. And um, as you can see, the one bullet that would apply to anyone, whether or not you have work experience, is fo focused on proactive communication, whether in office or working remotely. I have a feeling a lot of people on this call probably check their work email at night or on the weekends, and you might be on your phone while you're doing it. I do that a lot. Um, you're just checking your emails. 
And if you can, you know, still communicate effectively, even though you're not in your cubicle at your computer checking that email, um, that's a good skill to have because when you work from home or you have a flexible schedule, you might be working on the fly. You know, you might um, have to work from a coffee shop one day or you're just checking emails like everybody else does on the weekends. And being able to do that with solid communication skills is really key. So again, it's another way to work flexible um, work into your resumes and cover letters or specifically resumes here. And then you'll see under the professional experience section on this one, they've listed full-time work from home position right next to the, um, the company and the location of the company there. So people understand that that was uh, a work from home position. So those are our tips for cover letters, or sorry, resumes. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Carol for the cover letter section. Hello. Um... I will apologize. I think some of you had a little bit of trouble hearing me um, before. I'm sorry for that. I've tried to make a couple of fixes here, so hopefully everything sounds a little bit better for you. Um, so talking about writing cover letters, um, first I think I want to just start kind of on a very general note about them, and, and there seems to be this sort of wide debate, and maybe it's just with the HR people <laughs> that I tend to hang out with, but whether or not to actually send a cover letter, whether or not people want to see them. Um, and my, my standard response on that is, if you send a well-crafted cover letter, that is not going to preclude you from getting the job. You're not going to lose out on a job because you sent a cover letter that somebody was not interested in reading. Um, but not sending one might. Um, me, personally, I'm a big fan of cover letters. Um, they, that is the first thing that I look for when I look at an application, and um, it's where I look to glean most of my information about a candidate. So um, I, I feel like you can't go wrong by sending it. So um, some tips for how to do that and do it well and craft. Um, craft a, a well-written um, cover letter. First of all, yes, I'm sorry to tell you, you do have to write a unique new cover letter for every job you're applying for. Um, please, please, please do not use a template um, you know, or a form cover letter, rather, um, that you've had sitting on your desktop for the last two years that you send out you know, with every application. Um, we know it, <laughs> um, and we, we can tell pretty quickly, and it just, it, it will very honestly, it will get barely a glance. Um, I want to see something that is specific to the job that you've applied for. Um, otherwise, just send me your resume, because that will tell me all of the information that you probably included in your cover letter. Um, definitely show your experience. Um, tell, tell me a story, or, um, whoa. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, tell me a story or comment on your past flexible work experiences or lessons that you've learned. Um, answer that question. Why you? Um, you know, you you can customize um, again because you are customizing for each job and each position. Um, you can customize and personalize by um, you know finding out who is the hiring manager or who is the department head. Um, you know, reference the role in that cover letter and talk about why you're a good fit, whether it's past work experience, um, the ability to work remotely or work with a flexible schedule, um, and um, to really, basically you're pushing, pitching yourself in this cover letter. Um, why do I want to take the time to really consider you for this role? Um, I definitely recommend that first and that last paragraph needs to be very strong. When I look at a cover letter, I always look at the first paragraph, and hopefully they hook me in and make me want to read more, um, and then I'll kind of glance down to the end, and then I decide if I'm going to read everything in between. Um, so touching on the benefits, um, why the employer would benefit from hiring you for that role. Again, as we said before, of course the flexible uh, options that may come with the job are important, um, but you can't focus solely on that. And I also wanted to mention you should, um, 
you know, there's a difference between applying for a job that um, it has stated that it comes with those flexible options, so you're going to address that in one way, um, again, either with your experience or your skills. Um, and then there are also times where you may be applying for a job where it's left a little um, up in the air, whether or not there's an option for some flexible options. Um, go ahead and, and use that cover letter to kind of talk about that. Um, it's always nice to kind of offer, if it's um, if the location is close to where you live, to offer, you know, I'm happy to work in office for the first three months to learn everything about the job, the company, embrace the culture, connect with the team, and then would love to discuss the opportunity for working remotely, things like that. So you can cover that um, in the public letter. Um, and then uh, in terms of formatting, um, so on here it tells us, you know, let's consider using single spaces, um, which is good. Uh, uh, you don't want something real long and text heavy, um, but you don't want a ton of white space in between your, your text either. Um, I, strongly I strongly advise you to think carefully about your font, um, the size, uh, the color, um, a little bit of your personality getting in there is fantastic. Love it. Again, that's how I'm going to kind of get to know you a little bit. Um, but if you make it really, really small and hard to read, <laughs> I got to tell you guys, my eyes are getting old. Um, then it, it, it just it becomes a little bit more burden burdensome. Um, use um, bolding or italics or underlines uh, or bullet points for some key points that you want to really pop out of the page. That's always really helpful. Um, and uh, you can always then um, use those bullet points as well for um, your accomplishments. Um, I think, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, if the employer has asked some questions in the job posting, we, we do this here at FlexJobs. Um, with every role, there's usually a few things that we kind of need to know from you going in. Uh, make sure you answer those questions and make sure it's sort of easy for the recruiter to find. Um, it's very common for an employer to ask questions, um, whether it's how soon can you start, what kind of a salary range you're looking for, different things like that. You do need to address those questions um, and absolutely follow all of the directions. If you think about it, you know, one of the things that you're trying to convince this employer of is that you, um, you are capable and skilled at working remotely or working as a freelancer or working a flexible schedule. Part of that, like the very like, key basic skill of that is being able to follow directions and instructions. So if somebody sends a resume and cover letter in to me, and they haven't followed the directions of the application process, it doesn't fill me with a great deal of confidence that they're going to be somebody that I can trust and count on, especially in a remote environment. So make sure you, you read everything carefully, and then reread it again once you have your application put together and your cover letter put together before you send it out. Um, just triple check that checklist of things uh, that you want to make sure are included in there. Um, so from our partners, some things that they have recommended as well. Um, you know, making sure that you plead your case of why you're the best candidate. You know, we talked about this a little bit on the previous slide in saying, um, why you? Um, so when your focus is, um, is very narrowed to that specific position, um, you're able to address those questions. And again, you know, using bullet points perhaps or, or bolded words to, to highlight your accomplishments um, and your measurable results that apply directly to that job is always a good idea. Um, <laughs> make your cover letter interesting to read. Um, yes, I'm, I'm going to second that. Um, I see a lot of cover letters um, for a lot of different positions, 
and um, most of them, I, they're, they're, um, they are very boring and formulaic, as this says. Um, there's not a lot of thought or creativity. But the idea behind that cover letter, again, you're pitching. Um, you want to let that recruiter see a little bit of your personality, a little bit of who you are, and you want them to, to know more. You want them to really picture themselves working with you, talking with you, interacting with you. Um, so make them interesting. Um, definitely put your personality in there somewhere, and we'll show an example of that in just a minute. Um, and then the third tip from our partner um, is about translating your qualifications into their language. I think that will come up on the screen in just a second. Um, but essentially, you, you want to um, you want to really get to know the company um, through your research that you're, you've already done before you send in this application. You want to know what kind of terminology they use, um, what their keywords are, um, what their basic culture is, how the, what their voice is. You can glean all of that from websites, um, social media. There are lots of different opportunities to go online and research a company and figure out, like, what makes them tick? And your biggest clues are going to be right in that job description. Um, some companies use a very kind of standard format with a lot of sort of official sounding language that tells you something about that company. Other companies are a little looser, a little more casual. Um, again, that tells you something about the culture of that company. Those are generally very um, very well thought out decisions, the, the words and the language to use in a job description, in a job posting. So pay attention to that and work that into your cover letter. Um, so next, a couple of examples of cover letters that I've seen that I just thought were fantastic. Um, this first one, um, uh, somebody was joking, actually, I shared this with a colleague, and somebody was joking that they probably um, looked me up on our website on FlexJobs and um, kind of guessed at my age <laughs> and knew that a uh, pop culture reference to friends would probably be near and dear to my heart. And they were right. Um, so this person in their first paragraph um, referenced the show Friends and used that to illustrate how the, their own awareness of flexibility was launched. Um, and you can see they kind of talk about, you know, how is it that they could spend time in a coffee shop in the middle of the day, but they still appear to be successful. Um, and then segued into why this person believes in the importance of work-life balance and how they want to help other people with it and things like that. So I thought that was really fantastic. It definitely caught my interest. It was definitely not formulaic. Um, and it definitely made me want to read more. Um, this other one, um, I, if I remember correctly, I think that this person didn't necessarily have a lot of remote work experience, um, but what they did is they, they did a fantastic job of using this cover letter as an opportunity to um, highlight the skills that they have that relate directly to being a successful telecommuter. So um, they talk here about being able to analyze and solve problems, that they have sol solid judgment, that they are self-reliant, um, very professional, very organized, very creative. Um, those are all key parts of being a successful telecommuter um, or you know, any kind of flexible option, actually, flexible schedule. You need all of those things. I need to know that you're, you have the skills and that you will be able to make the right decisions about your schedule and when you're working and when you're not, and that when you are working, you're very focused on what you're doing. So this is a really, um, really smart, um, really helpful way for this person to highlight the skills that they have that they felt translated very appropriately to a flexible job. 
All right. Thank you, Carol. And uh, as a couple people pointed out, it's Murphy's Law. <laughs> thank you, Jen. That whenever we're talking about resumes and cover letters, there will be a nice big typo in our presentation. So thanks, everybody, who caught that. <laughs> you should definitely make your cover letters interesting to read, not interesting to ready. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, and you should proofread better than we do. That's for sure. Um, so thank you, Carol, for going over all of the, the cover letter tips. And uh, and as far as going beyond the resume and cover letter, um, there are a couple of things to note, and these were also provided by our partners. Um, and essentially, um, one of the first things you want to do is to carry over these tips into your LinkedIn profile. So I think everyone here should be on LinkedIn. If you're not already, it's really easy to set up and it's free. And um, when employers search for you online, your LinkedIn profile is one of the first things that will pop up, which is oftentimes a lot better than some of the other things that will pop up if someone Googles your name. So um, yeah, definitely take a few minutes to start a LinkedIn profile if you haven't already. And then use similar keywords and descriptions and um, and all of the tips that we've mentioned to talk about yourself on LinkedIn as a flexible worker, as somebody who has the ability and maybe the experience to do work in a flexible environment. Um, particularly on LinkedIn in your summary section, that's a really good place. Um, when LinkedIn, when employers or recruiters are searching on LinkedIn, the summary section is weighted very highly um, in their search algorithms. So whatever you put in that summary section on LinkedIn is going to um, determine a lot of how you wind up in search results by recruiters. So be sure to focus on the keywords that you want to put in there as far as flexible work goes, but then also your particular experience and your profession um, and the, uh, you know, what you've done for your career. And then next, um, try to create an online portfolio or a simple website. There are so many easy ways to do this now. Again, it's very similar to setting up a LinkedIn profile. These are three free ways, um, a couple fairly obvious ones and then one that's maybe a little more creative. Um, so about.me is a really easy way to set up a one-page profile about yourself online. It's very clean and simple looking, but it's an easy way, again, for employers when they're Googling you to find out a little bit of information. And you can also include links to your LinkedIn profile or um, samples of your work and all sorts of other stuff. So about.me is a really nice, easy tool to use. Um, WordPress is also a really simple kind of blog or website creation tool. Um, that's what I use for my, my own personal professional um, portfolio that I have online. Um, I've been using WordPress for a while now and it's really simple and intuitive. Um, it's free so that's always nice and it um, it just gives you kind of a, a more options than about me. There's more sort of formatting stuff you can do with it. Um, and then Pinterest is another way. We've actually talked about this a lot at FlexJobs that Pinterest, if you wanted to dedicate your, your Pinterest account to your professional sorts of stuff, you can make different pin boards for your experience, for your education, for your volunteerism, for your technical skills, for your summary of qualifications, all those different things. And then you can also pin samples of your work if you have anything else online um, you know, that is able to be pinned there. So it's a really neat way to put things out there visually. And I think that's really the ultimate goal of most of these things that go beyond a resume and cover letter is that when an employer Googles you, and they most likely will Google you, I think now it's like 93% of um, employers or recruiters Google the candidates that they are considering. Um, these are some nice ways to visualize you. And we were talking about before how it's important to make those visual connections and to let an employer picture you working for them, to really be able to see you doing that job. Um, this is an easy way to do it, actually doing it visually. And then finally, to be a constant job, flexible job seeker. So never sort of, you know, once you've got a job, you should still regularly update your LinkedIn profile. You should keep your social media presence fairly clean. You should update those, those portfolios that you've made and keep in regular contact with your network. Um, there are no guarantees in the employment, employment market nowadays. It's highly unlikely that you'll spend, you know, 20 or 30 years of your career at the same company. And so it's really important to always be prepared whether you want to move on voluntarily or whether something happens at your company and you're forced to be a job seeker again. Um, by keeping, you know, everything just neat and tidy as you go, you'll be ready for anything that comes up. So I really like that, just to be a constant, flexible job seeker. 
Okay, so a couple helpful resources at FlexJobs before we get to the Q&A session, and um, there are definitely a lot of questions coming in, so we want to get to those. First, we have the FlexJobs blog. It's a completely free resource um, for anybody to see, and in particular, if you go to this job search area on the FlexJobs blog, we have resume tips and cover letter tips. So if you want to get even more in-depth with this sort of stuff and read up on some more expert tips, you can um, go to those two areas and find out all there is to know about cover letters for and resumes for flexible jobs. Uh, we also have the free company guide, which I mentioned before. It's flexjobs.com slash company dash guide, and that will get you um, to a database that you can search for all of the companies that are on our site so you can see what companies have offered flexible jobs in the past, and that's a really good indicator that they are a flexible company who will continue to offer those types of jobs. And then finally, you can search for jobs. Um, and like I said, whether or not you're a member, you'll be able to see what's on our site. It's just a little bit restricted. If you're not a member, you won't be able to see the company's name or the contact information, but you can at least see the types of jobs that are on our site. Um, and then once you become a member, you can see all of the information about the job posting, how to apply, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so those are just the resources that we would pinpoint you to on Flex Jobs. But let's go ahead and get to your questions. So I'm going to... Um, Look through the questions list, and I will either bounce these over to Carol to answer, or I'll take a stab at them myself. Um, so uh, one of the questions that we had right off the bat was how to craft a resume or a cover letter for online submittal. And I think a lot of people um, are asking about this. If you know that it's a big sort of search engine, one of those applicant tracking systems that you're applying to, um, Carol, do you have any tips for how to format those types of resumes when you know it's going into a, a big system like that versus just emailing it to a recruiter? Yes, that's a great question, actually. Um, and some of what we said today, throw it out the window if you know that it's going into a tracking system online. Um, the formatting and um, things like that has to be really, really clean and fairly traditional. Um, and um, if you, honestly, I don't remember off the top of my head the order, but there, if you Google it, there are actually great articles even detailing out the order in which you should enter your information, whether it's the job title, I believe it's the job title, and then the company, and then the location, and then the date, or it, it's some kind of a format like that um, based on how these systems will read it. Um, we don't use one here at FlexJobs. Um, I actually read each and every application that comes across. Um, so I'm not completely familiar with that order, but um, yeah, be really, really clean, really simple. Don't add in any kind of graphics or pictures um, because they, they won't be picked up. Um, just real straightforward with your information. Yeah, definitely great tips um, and so true for those big applicant tracking systems. And actually, if you go to our blog and search for applicant tracking system as um, to look up articles on our blog, we have a couple different articles about sort of beating or getting through those big online applicant tracking systems um, and still being a candidate for those jobs because it is one of those daunting things where you kind of send your resume down the, the black hole and keep your fingers crossed. So we've got some tips and techniques for handling those situations in particular. Um, and then another question was, um, should the cover letter be within the body of the accompanying email or as an attachment? And I'll field this one, but Carol, if you want to jump in, if you have anything else, feel free. Um, I would say it should go in the body of the email. Um, you could also attach it if you wanted to, just in case, but I would really say having that email um, that you send to the employer be the cover letter and then attaching your resume is probably the standard way to go now. All right. It sounds like that's the right answer. <laughs> um, and then, um, oh, this is a good question probably for Carol. And I have to say, um, this comes from a person with the last name Weiler. That's actually my last name. Uh, my maiden name is Weiler. So we don't see a lot of each other out there. So that's kind of interesting. But the question for Carol is, um, how much time will a hiring manager spend reading a cover letter if they, you know, breeze through a resume really quickly? Kind of, you know, I know you touched, talked about, um, the parts of the, the cover letter that you look at, but how much time would you say in general you spend on reading cover letters? Um, yeah, that's another really good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a reason that recruiters have had sort of a bad rap out there. It's well-deserved. Um, not very much time, to be very frank. 
um, which is why you really want to you really want to hook me very quickly um, with that cover letter. Um, so I I personally spend more time looking at the cover letter than I do the resume. Um, but it's still I, I don't I guess I haven't ever I've not ever tried myself. But uh, honestly I would say less than thirty seconds unless I'm interested. Yep. Yeah, I would say that's probably pretty accurate. I was just trying to think if I'm reading a cover letter, how long you know would that typically take? And um, but interesting yeah. that you spend more time on those. That's that's good to know. And it is you know when you're dealing with like an email situation or something where it's not one of those big online applicant tracking tracking systems where it's a computer reading things first. Um, I think you'll find, like Carol said, some recruiters really enjoy getting a cover letter that's well written and kind of sparks their interest. All right, and so people are asking, a few people have asked, how do you include, um, a lot of employers ask for a salary range requirement in a cover letter, and how do you include that information if you don't know what a realistic salary range would be? Um, I can sort of... Oh my gosh, can I take this? Oh yes, go right ahead. <laughs> I love this. I'm so glad you guys asked this question. I, I had a note to myself to include it in my presentation. I totally forgot. Um, so yes, great, great question. What I would recommend, you can do some research, um, first of all, PayScale or Salary.com or Glassdoor, and you can try and get a sense of, of what the going rate for your location um, and for that kind of a position is. Keep in mind, a lot of that is also based on the size of the company and the scope of the job. Um, so be careful with that. It'll give you a good indication, but I would not necessarily shoot for like the you know upper percentile on that salary range. Um, one of the things that I like to see is um, you know a lot of people will say salary is negotiable that kind of thing, um, which is fine. I, I accept that as an answer. Um, some people will say um, I really like to know more about the role um, before I can answer that question. Fair enough. Um, I can absolutely respect that. Um, I've seen some people say um, that uh, that they, you know, they'll they'll give a range, but also say if I'm really outside of your budget, please, you know, I still would be interested in talking because I would, I would consider something lower. That one's a little bit tricky um, because. If you would consider lower, you probably would have put that in there. Um, and uh, you know, I'm not necessarily. I don't want you to make. I don't want to make you feel like you're not worth what you need or where you value yourself. But that is an option. Um, and then the other thing that I've seen that I thought was really effective is um, people will talk about. They'll, they'll bring it back to why them for this particular job. Um, and so they'll say, you know, a fair wage for this job will be fine. The position and the ability to do X, Y, and Z um, is more important to me. And believe me, I know, like, I don't live in a fantasy world. We all have bills to pay, and we all need to make a certain amount of money. Um, but if you are really just trying to get your foot in the door and, and get a conversation um, and don't want to commit, to a salary range, that's a good way to get somebody's attention. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point too, is that ultimately the, the goal is to get your foot in the door and have that conversation either in person or over the phone or um, with an employer. And you know, once you showcase your skills and your abilities, um, hopefully that will speak for themselves and you'll be able to get that salary range that, that is commensurate with skills and experience and what you need to live. <laughs> it's always good. Um, so we have uh, a couple questions, let's see, um, about, where did that question go? Um, oh, addressing, so a couple, yes, older workers are asking about if um, they should leave dates off of their resume or if dates are still important, should you just put the amount of time that you've worked at an at a employer versus the actual dates of employment? Um, you know, I guess from a recruiter's perspective, do recruiters see that as uh, a red flag or is that really not an issue anymore? 
and then um, in general handing, handling long employment histories. Um, so let's say you have maybe 25 or 30 years of experience, you know, where is there a particular cutoff date? Is there an amount of time that you should um, put on your resume? Basically, like what have you seen um, people do? How do they handle that? And what would, would you recommend as far as dates and time frames on resumes? Um, the date one is, is tough. I, I completely understand um, if you're a more mature professional and you have lots of experience. Um, I, I, I like to say that um, that is not held against people, um, but the reality is that we all know it is. There are recruiters out there who will look at that and see that as not such a great thing. I'm honestly not sure why, because I feel like if the experience and the skills match the position, I would much rather have somebody who is established and professional and has that knowledge base that I'm not going to get from somebody who's, you know, maybe in their, you know, early to mid-20s that hasn't had a lot of experience. So I don't necessarily know why we have issues with that sometimes, but the fact is that we do. So I understand wanting to leave the dates off. Um, I don't personally like it, but I also don't look unfavorably upon a candidate for not doing it. I, I like to see. I want to see um, when it was. Um, because if, if let's, say, let's say you haven't worked in five years. Let's say you took some time off to take care of an aging parent. Um, and so you haven't worked consistently in five years. I won't know that if you don't put the dates on. And some people might argue that that's a good reason to not put the dates on. But it, it, it's a little disingenuine, in my opinion. Um, I would recommend putting your date and addressing the issue head on in your cover letter, whether it's a gap in employment or the fact that you are an older worker. I would just address that. I'm a big fan of, you know, call out the elephant in the room and talk about it in your cover letter. That's a great opportunity to allay any fears that someone may have about something on your resume. Um, and then I think the second part of that was um, how many years of experience should you show. Um, depending on, if it's with different companies, I would probably only go back about 10 years. Um, or you know, certainly not more than two pages. Um, and but if it's all with the same company, then definitely you're going to put that on there. That shows the longevity. Again, in that cover letter, then addressed why after 25 years you left this company. Um, whether it's you know you've retired and now you're looking for a flexible option um, on the side to keep yourself you know, engaged and busy, or this is a passion um, that you've always wanted to explore after spending 25 years in this other arena. Um, again, talk about that in your cover letter. Thank you, Carol. And uh, there's just one more question. I know we're reaching the top of the hour, so we'll start to wrap it up. But the question came in from an, multiple people about what constitutes previous flexible work experience. And we had one comment from a teacher who prepared lesson plans after hours at home. Um, I know some teachers do tutoring on the side in their homes. And we had a, a mortgage loan professional who traveled um, from state to state and was often sort of working remotely in that way, not necessarily from home, but from different locations, hotels and that sort of stuff. I would say yes to all of that. Um, I think that that all qualifies as flexible or remote um, work experience and, you know, for traveling um, sales types of jobs and things like that. Basically, your ability to work outside of an office environment um, where you're not being monitored, your manager isn't right down the hall, your coworkers aren't sharing the cubicle next door. Um, if you've worked outside of that environment, I would think that there have um, there are ways to phrase that and to to put that on your resume and in your cover letter that that showcase that experience as flexible work experience because it really is. It shows that you can work independently, that you um, you know can kind of stay on task, work on your own time, set your own hours, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and work in environments that are not traditional environments, too, because that really is what it comes down to, is that for now, anyway, the home office is not a traditional work environment. Um, we hope that it becomes more traditional um, as more people start doing it, but 
um, yeah, I would say all of that definitely counts um, for flexible work experience. Um, and on that note, we're going to have to wrap it up since we've reached the top of the hour, but I do want to say tomorrow you'll all be receiving an email with a recording of this webinar. There will also be a very short three-question survey. It really will take you 15 or 20 seconds. It's just like reviewing a resume um, to fill out this survey very quick. So please fill that out. It's in the email that you'll receive tomorrow. The recording of the webinar will be in that email, like I said. And um, thank you all very much. We wish you the best of luck crafting your resumes and cover letters for flexible jobs and all the jobs that you're applying for and hope you uh, get in there for the job interviews. Thank you all and thank you Carol and Jen for, for helping out today. All right, thanks everyone, have a great day.